Welcome to podcast number nine. We're going to continue our podcast series with the order of the sport. Uh, I want to keep this uh, order of the sport and really what all these fundamentals are of riding a motorcycle. I want to keep this going uh, before we add any other subjects. So yes, here we are, podcast number nine. And, and where we're at in the order of the sport is brakes. So we've, we've already had our, our vision and our focus. Uh, we've already had motor controls. We've already had bike placement. And now it's time to move on with uh, our brakes. So brakes are kind of an interesting thing. And, and I, I know I said this in one of the other podcasts. Of what, what are the silver bullets of our sport? Silver bullets of our sport are eyes and brakes. And, and I know you want to go quicker. You want to go quicker or you want to be a more proficient rider. Well, brakes, brakes in your eyes are the real keys for those. So let's, let's dive into brakes and, and see why we're talking about them and also why they're in this order of the sport. So we, we talked about the quickest way to get around the racetrack is basically to hold the throttle um, wide open as long as you can, traveling more feet per second. It'll help your overall speed. Well, we, ha we have to put the bike in the right position to do that. That's where we talked about bike placement. But now we're going to look at what's the most efficient way to make that happen, and that's with the brakes. So how the brakes are going to work is this is part of the big adjustability, and you have to start thinking about your entries a little bit differently. The entries really serve the purpose only to put the bike into a position to accelerate. And they're, they'll do it more efficiently because if you didn't use the brakes, then it's going to take more time to make that happen. We want to use the brakes to be able to do it so we can do it in less time. Hence, it makes the acceleration zone longer. So we have to start thinking about our brakes in a different way. And we have to look at, okay, so when should I have how much brake pressure? And when should I have brake timing? Yeah, brake timing. Let's introduce a little something a little bit new to you. So the way that we start getting into it is, is um, we have to control our speed. Motorcycles, they, they accelerate so well, and that's one of the reasons why we all get so addicted to these things, is they accelerate amazingly well. Well, what, what offsets, offsets that, what mitigates that is the brakes. So we'll, we'll skip ahead a little bit, which is, so when should you go to your brakes? Well, uh, you go to your brakes when your comfort level's been exceeded, or you go to your brakes when you're scared, absolutely. So you go to your brakes when you're scared. Think about it. Think about your braking. Braking straight up and down is done for speed control. You have to control your speed. If the bike is straight up and down, your, your tire is straight up and down, you've got an amazing contact patch straight up and down, you're not asking that tire to do anything else but brake. You can brake at 100% of you or your bike's ability at that point because that's all you're asking your tire to do. You can brake until literally the rear wheel comes off the ground uh, because th th that that's all you're trying to do. So straight up and down, think about your brakes as speed control. But now as you turn into the corner and we're going to trail brake, right? Because that's what the best, in the, that's what the best riders in the world do. And that's what allows for the adjustability for the conditions, the adjustability for what bike you're on, <clears throat> the adjustability for grip, just ability for the corner radius, the corners arc. So straight up and down, use your brakes for speed control. As you turn in, I want you to start thinking about you're using your brakes for geometry or to control the direction of the bike, control the bike placement. The wonderful benefit <clears throat> of that as well is that because the contact patch of the tire is better, you'll have more grip. So straight up and down, speed control. As you turn in, Think about your brakes as direction control, direction control. And this really is, is where we start, we, we flip around our thought process. We flip around our thought process thinking about it's not where we go to the brakes that's important. It's where we let off the brakes that's important. Because if, if, if we just have an arbitrary place of where we go to the brakes, and yes, when you're running within a, a second of your lap time, right? Racers are going to run within a second of their lap time then they need a reference, right? Oh, I have a general idea of where I'm going to go to the brakes, but it's where they, where they want to end their braking. That's the real report card. And we'll bring that up uh, into play here in just a second. So 
How does that start? It starts with the first 5% of your breaking and it ends with the last 5% of your breaking. The first 5% of your breaking is what allows you to adjust for the corner radius. So think about that. If you go to the brakes at boom, 40%, right? Boom, 40%. Well, you're hoping that that corner is essentially a, a corner that that 40% that you just stabbed the brakes at works. You hope it does. But if you go to the brakes at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and this is percentage of brake pressure. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5%, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5%, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5%. Now you've allowed, you've allowed the bike's front end to, to settle. You've allowed the fork springs to gain energy. The tire contact patch is growing. And now you're in a position to adjust for what that corner radius has to offer you. So we have the first 5%, that's what sets the stage, right? That's what, that, that gets us in a position to adjust. You have the last 5% of your braking, right? So it's the last 5% of your braking, the last five, four, three, two, one percent of your braking, because you're looking at it to adjust for control. But now what changes is the middle 90% of your braking. That's, that's really where the magic is, right? So the first 5% allows you, puts you in that position. The last 5% is what guarantees that condition, right? Guarantees that, that, that action you want. But now the middle 90% of your brake graph, and when we talk brake graph, right? Brake graphs should look more um, like a shark fin rather than a bell curve, right? You're gonna build up the brake pressure, but you're gonna get off that brake pressure. We'll talk more about that in just a second. So we, we build the brake pressure, get our speed control, and then as we turn in, we're thinking of your brakes more for geometry. So the shorter the radius of the corner, that requires that 90% to be more condensed. So shorter radius corner requires more brake pressure but a shorter period of time, right? You get it done earlier because that's what the radius is. It's a short radius corner, you have to get it done. So you still go to it at one, two, three, four, five percent, and you still release it at five, four, three, two, one, depending on what you need to get the direction you want. But the middle 90% changes based on the, the corner radius. Short, short radius corner, yes, absolutely. We're gonna, we need to get that done so it's more brake pressure sooner and a shorter period of time. A longer radius corner. Still gonna to go to the brakes at one, two, one, two, three, four, five percent. One, two, three, four, five percent. Now you build that 90%, but that 90% takes less brake pressure for a longer period of time because the radius is longer, right? So you see how we start to be able to adjust and you can think about any type of a corner. Yeah, a short radius corner, short arced corner, <clears throat> that, that 90 degree corner, yeah, you can have more brake pressure earlier for a shorter period of time. Longer radius corner, big 180 degree corner, right? It's got a big gigantic entry. You use those brakes for a longer period of time with less brake pressure because that's what the radius dictates. So when you start thinking about this, there's a couple things that go along with this. One is, I hear people ask me all the time, oh my gosh, my corner speed's down, my corner speed sucks, I need more corner speed. and realize that corner speed, roll speed, is essentially the byproduct of a good entry. Oh, where's the good entry come from? How we use our brakes. There's very few corners in America. There's maybe five or six corners in America where you've optimized your entry. In other words, you've used the brakes as efficiently as you can. You've let them off at the proper spot, but because the radius is so long, right? Road America Carousel, um, uh, Willow Springs Turn 2, corners like that, we're actually picking the throttle up to increase your corner speed makes a difference in your lap time. See the difference there? If you've used the brakes as efficiently as you can, you actually carry more overall speed in those longer radius corners and that's where your corner speed or roll speed comes from. So very few corners where, where, where that happens. So corner speed, roll speed is just a byproduct of a proper entry and also the proper use of the throttle on the way out because you've got direction. Ah, you see how that works. So I want, I want everybody to be able to under, understand that, that by using them as efficiently as possible, you've optimized your entry speed, you've opt optimized the contact patch. 
So now we need a report card for that. So we need something that tells us that we've done it correctly. And what that boils down to is neutral throttle, how much neutral throttle that you have. So the neutral throttle works on some corner radiuses, you're gonna have neutral throttle. You simply cannot maintain brake pressure or maintain that kind of speed for that long of a time. So yeah, you'll have some neutral throttle. But our report card is how little neutral throttle we have for that given, given corner. So a 90 degree corner should be no neutral throttle. Matter of fact, there was just a great video of J.D. Beach uh, at Laguna Seca this year um, where on board with, uh, with, his, uh, with him, and you can hear the engine. He runs Laguna zero neutral throttle, none, right? So in other words, he's used a brake as efficiently as possible. So just as he's released the brake, the bike is pointed so he can pick up the throttle. That's using the brake and the throttle as efficiently as possible to get the bike to go where it needs to go. And so the report card there is, how little neutral throttle do you have? So you can look at it and say, well, gosh, a 90 degree corner, right? We shouldn't need neutral, we shouldn't have to have neutral throttle in a 90 degree corner because the radius is so short. And then we look at those big, longer radius corners, how much neutral throttle do you have or can you maximize not having neutral throttle in there? So we've got some fantastic report cards for that uh, in, in your braking. So, Let's go back a little bit. Braking, all right, braking is one of the silver bullets. How well we can use our brakes and how we can adjust for every different kind of quarter radius. How do we do that? Ah, let's go back and look at our, let's go back and look at our order of the sport, right? First thing we have to do is identify it and that's why we have our vision and focus. Second thing is we have to have our motor controls, how we use the brakes, how we release the brakes. And now we also need that report card of our bike placement. Now, to get to those things, we're gonna use the brakes because it's the most efficient way of getting there. And once you understand what kind of radius it is and how you can use those controls, it'll help get you there in, uh, in essentially less time and a lot safer as well. The big takeaways on that with, with the report cards are how much neutral throttle and where you're releasing the brakes. Once you're able to take a look at that, then it, it'll make your job so much easier realizing, oh gosh, it's a long radius corner. I think I can use my brakes longer, lighter at the end of my braking to increase my roll speed and, and get rid of some of that neutral throttle. Same thing with a 90 degree corner, right? If you're using neutral throttle in a 90 degree corner, we, we want to be able to reduce that. So it goes back to how well am I using my eyes? Um, how are my motor controls? Um, and where am I putting the bike? Am I turning in too early, too late, or anything along those lines? So brakes. They, they really are um, a, really are a big deal, and it, it helps put that bike in a position to accelerate earlier, and it also helps do it safer.